friends welcome back to another video in Microsoft Flight Simulator this is the second aircraft that I was excited about with the 40th year anniversary after release and we are with the DC-3 we will do the same thing we did with Airbus A320 uh, go over the cockpit layout this is a little bit simpler than that and then do a cold and dark startup uh, we'll taxi to the runway take off take a look at how to operate the gyro pilot by the way this is the classic version not the retrofit version that rocks the gns 530 and 430 uh, as you may already know this aircraft has two different versions based on liveries uh, if you load a livery that says retrofit you will get the gps units if you load a livery that says classic you will get the um, gyro pilot and the old school radio navigation and that's what we are going to do today we'll take a look at the gyro pilot operation and then turn around and attempt to do a land to see how we are going to or how am i going to perform i suck when it comes to tail draggers so that's no secret so expect anything at that part of the video but if you are interested in a particular part there will be timestamps in the description field you can jump around and uh, skip the video or fast forward to the part that you inter you are interested the most but i will try to cover everything as much as i possibly can so without further ado let's hop into the cockpit and get things going by the way we are currently in uh, Grand Canaria Airport at Canary Islands off, off the coast of um, I'd say Italy or close to South Africa and I chose this location just for the video of the view nothing specific, specific about it or nothing special about it that's where we are and during takeoff we will get the view of the sea the mediterranean and that's it so anyway enough talking about the scenery i guess let's start with the overhead and then work our way towards left from left to the right and then we'll take a look at down to the instruments and then to the pedestal and back so over on the, this side um you have the ready for uh quick start my bad and cold and dark mode selectors so when you flick these switches that turns the aircraft to that state we will be doing cold and dark so no need to do this but if you are going to shut it down to cold and dark if the engines are running for any reason you can use this and then the rest is your lights and battery master uh, oh, this is in up landing lights position this is selecting the tail lights uh, for position lights so wing and tail they have two sets of uh, the aircraft has two sets of position lights windshield heater pedo heat um, forward and aft engine primer switches prop the icer and then panel lights and the compass light over here and we also have a gpu switch right here which if you turn it on you'll see a ground unit power unit connected to the aircraft outside we will be starting on battery power today so we are not going to use gpu middle pedestal at the top you have the audio panel your com radios nav radios and the transponder on below is the mags and the fuel uh or like i think this is uh this is the activation switch so pulling it will turn them off uh, there will be no electricity in the engines or the mags and then pull it, pushing it in will give it to you altitude limit switch i'm still reading about this i haven't figured out what this does so i'll talk about it when i figure it out uh, engine starter for left and right and then mesh we'll talk about this booster pumps cockpit lights inverter carburet carb heater and then various cabin lights over here 
some gauges for the electrical system so altimeter i believe al al ampere amp meter i'm sorry not altimeter what i was thinking and the volts uh, that displays various uh, information down below let's hide the yoke and to hide the yoke there is a secret hidden click spot uh, that will hide the yoke this one i can't remember which oh i think I can't remember which one was it. I know that one. That is the, the box over here that will hide the co-pilot yoke. And then, oh, I think this one. Yep, the, the plaque hides the pilot's yoke. So the instruments, your standard sets of instruments, airspeed indicator, this is in miles per hour, not knots. Uh, altimeter, uh, your heading indicator, there's a clock up here. Uh, this is the artificial horizon. Um, this is a compass, turn coordinator, vertical speed indicator, ADF and VOR needles, radio compass, radio altitude, and then a glide slope indicator that looks like an HSI, HSI but does not function as an HSI. Uh, quite so we'll talk about this uh, maybe when we are discussing the radio navigation in this aircraft. In the middle, mm -hmm. you have your gyro pilot. Manifold pressure for both engines, RPM, oil pressure and fuel pressure gauges. And on down below is the selector for manifold pressure and different gauges. So normal instrument engines lead opposite instrument we will keep this at normal uh, these levers this is the carburetor heat and then the lock so it will lock it in place over on the co-pilot side we have the fuel indicator for left and right main tanks and left and right aux tanks vertical speed indicator for the co-pilot airspeed turn coordinator altimeter uh, oil temperature cylinder head temperature carburetor heat and air and down below is the hydraulic pressure de-icing and the temperature the outside temperature bending gear indicator over here and then the uh, some indicators for heating systems of the aircraft over on this side we have the landing gear pressure gauge and hydraulic system pressure gauges a cowl flap uh, switches not switches uh, controls and nothing else over on this side if we look down to the pedestal you have your uh, fuel selector switch here uh, for left engine and over here for the right one the trim wheel prop levers throttles and mixture over on this side we have the hand pump for the hydraulic system uh, these are this thing um, is the flat lever and then the hydraulic uh, system valve engine pumps selector takeoff position is here if you are operating gyro pilot you click it once there is a click spot that pulls it out and then you flick it Maybe we will need the engines. Oh, there it is, the top of the lever. And then you flick it like that and then click to the top to lock it in place. It's a little bit funky, but yep, then you lock it like that. Over here, that's the hydraulic system uh, reservoir that shows the hydraulic fluid level. level. And this is the pedestal pretty much, except we need to get to the side and go down a little bit to take a look underneath the throttle levers. We have the tailwheel lock over here, a rudder trim and aileron trim, autopilot, master switch, a parking brake, and then cross speed, which is in up. So that's all the buttons and switches in the cockpit. Uh, we have the 
magnetic compass here. Uh, what else? I don't think I'm missing anything here. Uh, the oxygen system, etc. Uh, these are just static stuff that's modeled and placed in here. You can open the windows. There are some click spots here and there to open the windows and the sound of the or the sound levels in the cockpit changes when you start the engines etc we'll keep them open but it will get pretty loud i'll adjust the sound levels of the video to save your ears but you can open and close the windows and these three switches down below are controlling the doors static objects and the chocks so the first one if i flick it down and go outside that is the uh, cargo compartment door. If I flick this down, that is the passenger door. And this is the static objects that's around the aircraft. So we'll keep them on for now. And we will close the doors when we are starting the engines. So, starting the engines, let's talk about this a little bit. This is a propeller aircraft with a radial engine. And these engines are air cooled there is no water cooling or any other cooling system so when you are on the ground and not traveling these engines tend to get hot so before you start the engines you need to open the cowl flaps to let the engines dissipate the heat to do that you flick the cowl flap switches to open position and when you do that and go outside nothing happens when you start the engines, they will open because you will get hydraulic power, not without engines running. How do we open the cowl flaps without starting the engines? So let me turn them off again. So these are the system gauges for the hydraulic system for and the landing gear. And this hand pump is used to build pressure in the system. So to do that, and that's the emergency shutoff valve by the way i skipped that you turn off on the valve and then hand crank the pump and as you see the hydraulic system pressure increases as you pump what we need is something between four five hundred before the green bond so i think we're good now that that'll do and then when we are done we will close the valve back up and if I go ahead and open the cowl flaps now, because we have hydraulic system pressure, you'll see the cowl flaps open. That's the first thing we need to do. The second thing we need to do is to get some, get the fuel, level, uh, fuel selectors into the appropriate positions. So for the left one, we'll go and select the left main tank. There it is, and for the right one, if I move a little bit forward, we'll select the right main tank. I'm using my controller to set this. I have mapped these controls, so that's why I'm not clicking it. Mixture goes full forward, which is uh, auto rich, and then there is an auto lean position over here, which they click in place, so they have detents, so, sorts of detents, detents of some sort, however you want to call it they go to auto reach prop levers full forward and we will crack open the troubles so that's the first step getting fuel into the engine and putting the uh, mixture prop and throttle levers in their uh, desired positions to start the engines next up we go to the overhead Better master comes on that will provide power to the aircraft. Position lights will come on. Over on this side, we'll start with the right engine. So right mag goes to both. And we'll start the right fuel pump or booster pump. So we'll see the bo booster pump kicking in. We'll prime the engine for a couple seconds, maybe three. Turn it back off and we are ready to crank the engine. To crank the engine, we need to energize right engine first you'll see a spinning sound or hear a spinning sound here in a second that's what i'm talking about 
when it becomes sort of steady it makes the same sound over and over again that means it reaches its max uh, RPM because it's a motor trying to spin the engine we hit the mesh button to engage a clutch that will spin the propellers after 15 blades which means we literally have to count how many times we see a blade so after 15 blades which I won't be able to show you here but we will gauge it and wait for maybe 10 seconds for 15 blades and then we will hit the engine primer and you'll see the engine starting but that's a successful start of the right engine we'll check the engine parameters it's idling around 1100 rpm which is fine fuel pressure is looking good manifold pressure is looking good oil temperature will start rising as the engine gets warm same for the cylinder head temperatures for the right engine and then the carb heat is uh, looking normal for now and that's about it for the right engine parameters so we can go ahead and turn the boost pump off for the right engine and then we will put the left mag to both we will turn on the left booster pump and do the same thing for the left engine to start the left engine except this time we flick the energized switch to the up position I think it makes sense to close the windows to hear the uh, energizer or whatever it is as you see it started to make the same sign kind of noise we'll click the mesh waiting for roughly four or five seconds and then throwing the primer out there and then there we go so now we have the left engine running we'll check the parameters real quickly it's idling around the same rpm as the right one the oil pressure is looking good for now we will get into the green band when we advance the throttles forward fuel pressure is a little bit high on, on number one because we have the booster pump but if we turn off the booster pump and check it again the fuel pressures should match oil temperature will increase and stabilize same for the cylinder head temperature and then carb and air carb air is going to get like the left engine so that's what we need to do to start the engines after start we need to turn on the inverters and as you see the gauges now started to display some volts and amps because both engines are running and generating power we'll turn the inverter to invert that to I believe DC power from AC or vice versa uh, I have to look it up by the way I forgot to tell this is the flap lever and that's the flap handle so Am I wrong? Hold on. Maybe I'm wrong. I thought that was the flat lever. Isn't it? I have to look this. I'm using my controller to engage the flaps and I might be wrong that might not be the flap lever oh it is the hold on hold on hold on hold on maybe the controller does not play the animations because this should be the flap lever yeah that is the flap lever yes that's part of the hydraulic system and you just lift it up until you get the desired flaps or move it down to get the flaps so let's move out a little bit and then I will show you so that's 
down position will extend the flaps and you will see them extending and they will be at the down position and then vice versa will just retract the flaps so I was correct it was just locked in place the beds the flaps and then you click over here to lock it in place so my controller assignment was not running the animations that's why let's close this window too it's getting loud in here and that one as well and that's a little bit better so now our engines are running we have good temps they have been running for a while so uh, they should be warm and the oil temperature should be looking okay now it's coming up into the green band uh, the generators will kick in around 1300 rpm so we can increase the power to add a little bit higher rpm and that is pretty much how you start the engines next up is to taxi to the runway all right we are now ready to taxi um you don't need pedo heat it's quite warm outside Landing lights, we don't worry about that right now. Um, yeah, we will We will just taxi. There are no taxi lights. And then turn on our landing lights when we are at the runway. And attempt to take off. The taxiing, we need to release the parking brake, which is down below here. That red. Uh, it's hard to see from this camera angle, I guess. That is parking brake. And we have an aircraft taxiing in front of us right now. So we will leave the parking position straight and take a right turn and taxi to the runway. There's a Dreamliner going for the gate, I guess. Uh, when taxiing, be gentle on the brakes because if you brake too hard it will tip the nose over and you might end up in a unwanted uh, situation position so be careful in the taxiway is a little bit hard because of this aircraft being a tail dragger but I'll try to do my best to align with the taxiway and if you center the taxiway on the clock sort of that is a good uh, approximation of the position of the aircraft uh, relative to the taxiway so we will follow this and we will enter the runway and attempt to do a takeoff uh, taxiing is not too bad actually uh, it taxis all right if you are careful with the speed and your troubles uh, maybe a little bit to the right so centering think about this taxiway continuing and passing through this clock that's how I gauge my position I'm off to the right a little bit so that might be wrong I think this is better and when you are in a different view maybe that was my camera view uh, roughly around here so I try to gauge it with the wiper blade window and the clock and that looks okay so let's slow down because we are coming up to our turn and we are a little bit too fast than I like um, I need to see the turn slow the aircraft down and we can do some differential braking to get back on the taxiway I'm just using right brake and uh, there is the runway I guess in front of us no we need to take a left turn from here to get to the runway out short which is right there and then that will take us to the runway so this should be the accurate taxiway position yep somewhere between the clock and the plaque over here and this view if you go down it comes to the right a little bit more uh, we need to reduce the throttles a little bit because it's speeding up more than I want and making it hard to turn all right coming up to the runway slowly I'm very gently braking to slow her down so that I can make this turn without overshooting it 
There is the hold short point. I think we can now get to the hold short point and slow down and stop here to discuss what we are going to do for taxi uh, for takeoff. All right, that is good. Okay, we are we are stopped, I guess. Before before there you see I tipped the nose a little bit. I'll hold the brakes right now and we'll talk about it. Landing lights will come on. For takeoff, we turn the booster pumps on. No flaps, we don't need flaps to take off in this aircraft. Uh, what we need to undo is the manifold pressure, 48 inches is the takeoff power setting. And we make sure the RPM is in the green band and not exceeding the red. And we'll take a look at the other engine parameters and release the brakes and do our takeoff roll. Let's get on the runway first. There she is with all its glory. Does this aircraft is perfect? No, it has some problems. They have been already addressed in the for forums. But it is going to get better. It will receive updates and hopefully it will become a good aircraft to fly and enjoy. That's no speed. I'm just taking, getting throttles to idle to uh, slow the aircraft down because she doesn't stop very quickly. These brakes are not the, the most efficient ones uh, that you would probably find in modern aircraft. That is pretty much us aligned with the runway. We'll hold the brakes here. And as I said, we'll go down, take a look at the manifold pressure. Oh, by the way, for takeoff, we need to put the cow flaps to trail mode. And that's it. Uh, also making sure other our magnetic compass is showing the same uh, heading with our gyro compass which in this case it is uh, if we look down here that's roughly 20 or 19 uh, uh, 195 ish this is 210 200 I'm sorry uh, 21207 yeah, rough 207, 208. And then the magnetic one is also showing about the same. So they do match. So let's go ahead and increase the throttles slowly to 48 inches. You don't ramp the throttles up at once. You just gradually increase them until you get the desired manifold pressure. And engine sounds in this aircraft are beautiful. Um, one thing I forgot, let me go back to idle. We also need to lock the tailwheel. If you don't wanna uh, be all over the place on the runway or take off, lock the tailwheel and then increase the throttles to desired throttle setting, which in this case is 48 inches of manifold pressure. Release the brakes and off we go. Tail should lift. We'll apply some forward pressure and use our rudders to stay on the runway center line and don't apply too much because you will regret it like I did here. As she doesn't turn and then she turns all of a sudden. And when you are up about 80 miles, you just tip back a little bit and she will be off in the air. Like so. Alright, that wasn't the best takeoff. I was all over the place when the tail level was locked, but now we are up in the air. We can come back on the RPM to 2500 and come back the manifold pressure to 40 inches. Landing gear is coming up, there's an aircraft taking off, so let's just stay out of its way. And that's it, we are up in the air. Now we will trim for. 1,000 feet per minute climb, not too much, trimming is luckily not too bad, it's, it's, it's easy to trim this aircraft, it doesn't fluctuate too much, so I was able to adjust the trim uh, very nicely. There we go, 1,000-ish, 1,000 or a little bit more feet per minute. Keep an eye on your airspeed, this yellow band is where you will need the flaps uh, below that. So we will keep the aircraft like this. And let's talk about the gyro pilot. So master switch is here, 
you have to turn this on for the gyro pilot to start working uh, we will adjust this heading to our current heading by flicking this switch and our current heading is 180 so come and click the switch to 180 ish so that we travel to the same direction and how you operate this that's the master switch you click that and you push, the, push this in it will slide, start flying the heading the other one is the climb uh, clockwise turn will increase your vertical speed counterclockwise turn will decrease your vertical speed and that light is the master switch light so the master turned off and I have to see why okay now it is back on and we are maintaining the flight attitude when the wings are level you will see the vertical speed getting back to where it was uh, banks in this aircraft makes you lose vertical speed and then when the wings are level you will get back to it okay very nice what we will do is we will climb to roughly about 4000 uh, and then we'll try to come back after uh, flying a little bit and attempt to land the aircraft there is the airport we'll probably approach from the seaside we'll do a downwind and then turn and then try to land uh, we can turn off the landing lights for now and we are coming up to 4000 so I need to start decreasing the vertical speed slowly to ease it and level off at 4000 the clockwise turn to in decrease the vertical speed counterclockwise to increase the vertical speed uh, just wanted to mention that one more time so we are up 4000 let's level the aircraft off that should do it just a little bit more because we are creeping up a little bit so let's get back to 4000 the altitude limit switches I believe sort of a decision hate type of thing I haven't tested this but I will let you know when I figured it out and what it is we are creeping up on vertical speed again as we gain speed so let's pull the throttles back to well let's check the RPM so RPM is in the green band we are doing 2300 RPM and the manifold pressure I think we can come to 34 35 inches that should be the green band for it that is based on what kind of uh, airspeed you want but 160 70 even 80 is fine and as you see we are uh, sort of flying level uh, you have to play with this to get completely uh, leveled but it is looking good now it will creep up you have to monitor and uh, adjust but right now we are on a steady flight traveling away from the airport so we need to turn around to the opposite radial so which is going to be zero in this case so let's do a left turn uh, I'm sorry let's do a right turn that's not left by selecting the heading to 360 or just zero aircraft should turn to that heading using the gyro compass beautiful we are turning and that turn will make us lose some altitude and hopefully we will get back to uh, 4000 with the altitude we will use lose uh, during this turn uh, maybe a little bit more than that but uh, we will get back up to 4000 uh, when we complete the turn a couple more things that we need to talk here this is the uncage button that will cage and uncage and then this but this is also the 
uh, sensitivity and this will uh, let me see if I can turn this knob that's the main um, anyway I need to figure that out again uh, we are turning back to the airport there is the airport uh, will fly parallel to the runway out into the sea turn around and land so we always need to descend a little bit to roughly a thousand ish somehow my altimeters got desynchronized so I think resynchronize them and we are at 4000 100. Uh, we need to turn a little bit to the right, so let's do that slowly. To maybe to oh, not to, not like that to right, please to 350. I haven't checked the runway heading, but we will be landing to runway 21, which is it should be heading through 10. And the outbound heading should be. Um, zero three zero. I believe. No, hold on. We'll figure that out. I can't just do the math while trying to focus on other things. Beautiful. So I need to up boost pumps. They are. We left them off. So let's turn the boost pumps off. And I never turned on the transponder, but that's fine. So this lever, I am not sure if it is required to move this to the gyro pilot position. Like this. I'm not sure what difference it makes, but well. There it is. There's the airport, we should start descending, so let's reduce the throttles to 25 inches and that should naturally start a descent without touching the gyro pilot. They are descending roughly 500 feet per minute, which is fine. turn right a little bit more to stay parallel to the runway maybe to 3 degrees, 30 degrees that should be the outbound heading 210 minus 180 that's 30 so that should be right uh, we should be flying parallel to the runway if we fly this heading and we will keep descending and we can play with the gyro pilot to descend a little bit more faster by turning the knob clockwise maybe getting up to a thousand feet per minute there we go that's better beautiful area I need to fly in Mediterranean more often I like the views over here Alright, coming down to 3000 feet, we will try to level off at 1000 and then take control and bring the aircraft in. I haven't checked any of the frequencies. Um, let me quickly see. The VFR map here. Where is my VFR, Where is my VFR map? Interesting. And I use the V key. Yes, I can. Okay, that's better. We'll keep the downwind leg a little bit long. Uh, I'll take a look at the frequencies. Both Charlie Lima Papa. We can do it here too. I don't need to open Navigraph, by the way. If you click. the airport we should see why
Interesting. Wasn't it VFR map? What is showing the frequencies? Anyway. Um, let me check if there is an ILS frequency. Approach runway 21. Left or right, so we are coming down to a thousand feet. So let me focus on leveling the aircraft first. Let's do this and then increase the power so that we don't lose too much airspeed, or maybe we'll keep the power like that to lead some speed off. It's okay. And what I was looking for, runway 2, 1 left. Uh, no, 2, 1 right, ILS. But the frequency is 110.7. We'll go to the overhead, nav radio, decimal 7, 110. And to transfer, we need to click here, that's the active frequency, we go down here, that is our uh, VOR, and we will set the runway heading, which is 206, it's easier to do it this way, 210, that's roughly 206 over here, that is pretty much all we need to do but we need to initiate a turn towards the runway here in a little bit all right we are ready to make the turn so let's get into the cockpit and see if we can intercept the runway so the needles are working our VOR is working uh, and we'll try to get the glide slope needle and the VOR needle into the center that will be our indicator of aligning with the runway and on final. We are currently at 160 knots. We will slow down after making the turn and start slowing the aircraft down to about 100 knots, 100 miles per hour, not knots, I'm sorry. Uh, let's not climb while turning. And uh, deploy the flaps to slow her down and keep speed around 80 knots for landing, 80 miles for landing, uh, not knots. I keep saying knots, I'm so used to it, but this is miles per hour, not, uh, not uh, knots. Uh, the speed is not knots, it's miles per hour. I got brain frozen there a little bit. Okay, so returning to the base leg. We will level off, fly a little bit, and then make another turn for the final leg. We'll maintain the altitude around 1400 feet. Let's trim the aircraft up a little bit for a level flight. Because we are not quite ready to descend yet. We have some distance to cover before we get to the runway. I think we can now make the turn to the final leg of the flight. We intercept the localizer needle as you see it's coming into the center we'll fly a little bit more and then make another turn there should be the airport somewhere in the distance let's turn now and the needle should come back to the center Not climb or descent, try to maintain the altitude. And we should be on final leg with this. I'm not sure if I tuned the right frequency. I hope I did. should align us with the runway. I see a couple lights in the distance. We are not quite there yet, so 
I have to see it myself and try to come in visually but yep there is the runway we made the turn a little bit wide I guess so let's get back on track let's not climb and I'll show you where I see the lights the runway is right there you see the flashing lights barely so we're getting back on track now and we should see the needle moving as we make the turn towards the runway so now we don't have too much distance left we need to start slowing down the aircraft for flaps I'm gonna cut the power as you see the needle is coming to the center again let's make the turn and maintain that's the needle it's drifting a little bit which is fine we'll get back on it so there is the runway right in front of us we need to go right a little bit and maintain a thousand feet and slow the aircraft down alright coming in there is the runway we need to gradually travel to the right a little bit to intercept the runway heading and that heading is 206 so we are close but not quite there yet as long as I see the lights I'm fine I'm just looking at the instruments for reference only this is going to be a visual landing and we need to maintain our altitude we are descending before I'd like to descend so let's keep it there Keep the nose up and vertical speed at zero as much as we possibly can and hopefully we will be able to descend the last 800 feet and land this aircraft we are slowing down I'm gonna cut the power down to 10 inches 15 inches that should slow us down to the flap speed come to the right quite a bit so let's make that turn without losing altitude and watch for the needle this time intercept the runway uh, we are descending so I don't want to descend just yet you have to be careful about a lot of things your vertical speed your air speed so we are coming down to that yellow line let's go a little bit flaps maintain the speed and altitude or not speed to the altitude and slow down further we should see the needle coming towards us now there is the runway to add a little bit of power to not to lose altitude too much but I want to come in low because landing tail draggers requires the pilot to fly level to the ground as much as uh, they can and then cut the power to make the wheels touch the runway and that's why I'm trying to maintain the speed and keep uh, aircraft aligned with the runway which is not happening quite yet but we are close That's better, let's cut the power again. And then we can now go more flaps, drop that boot landing gear, which will generate a lot of drag. And there is the runway, we need to go to the right a little bit. There we go. And keep going flaps until we are happy. and keep an eye on the altitude because we are slowing down and descending too much we need to keep the speed up come back on the runway both flaps now pretty much on runway heading this is gonna look funny we get my rudder pedals back on and passing the threshold 
we are just trying to level lie and make the front wheels touch the runway first and we are very off to the right so there is the front wheels and forward pressure to keep the aircraft on the ground and the tail will come down on its own all right i think we managed to land not perfect and it is super hard to land tail draggers i'm i'm telling i'm not an expert doing this that's finally the tail down and i'm all over the place All right, not the best landing, I guess. You see it here. <laughs> Look how we landed. Uh, we landed at a. We at least stopped at the right spot to unlock the tail wheel and get to the parking position. I need to practice more. Tail draggers. Uh, I'm not an expert and I don't think I will become an expert. Uh, it was just very hard. Let me tell you this. This is the most hardest aircraft type that you can try to land. Uh, and let me know in the comments how your experience is with tail draggers. It requires a lot of practice to get used to this thing and land. Uh, even the smaller ones that I have, I'm ha still having a hard time in those aircraft, but we will get on the taxiway right now. And go park our aircraft somewhere. Anyway, except the landing part, this is what this video is about. Uh, I'm not gonna stress about how bad the landing was. As I said, I'm not an expert in tail draggers and they are rather hard to land. Uh, but this aircraft flies nicely and if I can get used to it, I think it's enjoyable to have a retro airliner that served both civilian and military. During World War II, it was converted to a military C-47 and before that it was a commercial airliner so a lot of airlines used it and it can be found all over the world uh, which is quite interesting to think about i will do a different parking spot this time we'll turn left and find ourselves a parking spot over here which is closer so that we don't have to taxi a whole lot and maybe we'll just park to this P30 parking spot and see where I'm at. I'm terrible at aligning with these taxiways, parking spots, whatever. This is no different, but well, I think this is the best I can get it. I'll slowly come and let the aircraft stop and go outside and take a look. Oh, not too bad. Not too bad. We can pull a little bit more forward. Let the aircraft use its power to uh, get closer and then maybe stop here. All right, so we are down. At least we didn't kill ourselves virtually. We can set the parking brake now. And we will shut down the engines. To do that, we pull the mixture handles to other position. That should stop the engines. Drop levers come back to <laughs> idle. Throttles are closed. We'll close the fuel valves. Then turn off everything we need to turn off, including the gyro pilot master, it's already off. And finally, let's take a look. Turn the batteries off. And now we can open the doors and end the video here. 
Okay, so that's the DC3 for you guys. Uh, as I said, it wasn't a perfect landing, but I'm going to live with it. And I'll be seeing you in the next video. Thanks for being here.